What's going on Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams. It's been a minute since I've been here at the studio producing a video with you. And uh, we've got a special topic today and it's about sharing and introducing fish. Before I get into our main topic, I know somebody's gonna be asking about the Sprung shirt. This is produced by Gallery Aquatica TV. So go to gallery.aquatica.com.au for more information. I believe that's the right URL. If not, I'm sure Anya will correct me. But, uh, so this is our fish display aquarium. It's not as flashy as some of the fluorescent reef tanks that you're used to, but I really feel like a lot of the, the personable large showy fish that we keep just do a lot better in a tank like this. Now there's no doubt that gobies, wrasses, antheas, uh, blennies, a lot of the smaller guys that do much better in a reef tank. But um, enable, in order to be able to feed these fish as much as I want and whatever I want and to keep fish that might pick on corals like the butterfly fish, that's why I have a fish display. You know, perhaps in the future we'll throw in a harlequin tusk and a couple other showy fish. Um, but in today's video, we want to share with you either our successes or failures in introducing this gold crown butterfly fish in with the tinker eye butterfly fish. So there's closely related fish. The new fish is much smaller than the old fish. And uh, anytime that we get an aquarium fish, like I know it's going to be who at least three weeks, two weeks minimum for like a kind of a smaller reef fish uh, to go through quarantine. And usually, man, anywhere from like two to four months between when we thoroughly processed a fish and we're either comfortable putting it in the fish display or in one of the reef displays. And part of the reason for that is, um, you know, taking certain care measures to make sure the newly introduced fish uh, doesn't get, have any problems um, with his new tank mate. So um, today we're gonna pull down the divider and see what happens. So just to bring you up to speed, this is a roughly 150 gallon aquarium, about two feet by two feet, six feet long. This is a Pro Star rimless aquarium. Um, nice uh, metal frame stand underneath. We did a whole video on rejiggering the sump to have an automatic waste collector from the protein skimmer that will shut off when it fills up. So there's a lot of uh, documentation of this aquarium through the years, but one of the stars this entire time has been the Tinker Butterfly Fish. Now this is a pure Ketodon Tinker Eye from Hawaii that I got from TSM Aquatics. I want to say like over three years ago, kind of in the early days of setting up the studio. And uh, you can't get those fish anymore, uh, at least not in Hawaii, not the pure ones from Hawaii. Um, there's some other specimens kind of outside that range that show some hybridizing artifacts. And that's where the Gold Crown Butterfly Fish comes in. Now, I've never seen a gold crown butterfly fish. Um, the pure populations only come from Guam, but this is the next best thing. We believe that it's uh, either a gold crown butterfly fish kind of outside of its range or a hybrid between like a Burgess eye and a Declevis, which somehow ended up looking almost exactly like a gold crown uh, butterfly fish with that big yellow saddle between the eyes and the dorsal fin. Um, when I first saw this fish, this is a fish that we wrote about on reef builders a lot. Um, not a lot, but you know, with just a lot of praise um, in the early days of reef builders. And so to see a fish that was 90% of the way there was really, really exciting. So we've got this fish. Um, put him through quarantine. Uh, I think he got a little bit of ick, but otherwise I treated him. Um, I should mention I got him from Sea Dwelling Creatures because they have a good lock on fish from Central Pacific Ocean. And um, you know, he, he took to flake food a little bit. He preferred one flake food over the others and ate a little bit of mysis, but he was picky about the size of mysis. Um, but that's one of the reasons we put him in here. First, First reason is we want the other fish to get used to him being in the aquarium. So hopefully when the divider goes down, there's no problems. But the other kind of ancillary reason to put him in here is I could just, when he was in a 10 gallon tank, I had to be a little bit more mindful about what I fed him because any of that uneaten food would go into the filter and he wasn't you know, trained like an aquarium fish to eat when we provided the food, right? The butterfly fish, angel, surgeon fish, they're used to grazing all the freaking time. So put him in here, I could basically shower a bunch of food on him and it would just, whatever he didn't eat would just pass through the egg crate and all the other fish would eat it. Now something I did on accident is I put the divider on this side of the aquarium. So this is where we have the feeding hole and I suspect 
that if I had put the divider on the other side, I mean, the fish didn't have much uh, opportunity to interact with them or weren't forced to always kind of be looking his way for where the food's coming through, um, they might not have had so much association. So um, I do, su I suspect that the Tinker Eye will be fine. He'll be curious about his new tank mate, but um, there is a pecking order in this aquarium and it goes black tang, yellow tang, Coal tang is somewhere in the middle, and then purple tang. Uh, the tinker eye butterfly fish is just kind of separate from that, but there's four surgeon fish in there, and the purple, he's always been on the bottom, right? And so now that we have this new butterfly fish who's kind of round and flat and about his size, I suspect that he is not gonna be, he's gonna be the one to look out for versus the tinker eye, which is gonna be, you know, meeting a new uh, butterfly fish. So if anything happens, that purple tang throws a little shade towards my precious gold crown butterfly fish, um, he's immediately gonna get yanked out and thrown into one of the reef tanks. But uh, I'm happy to report that this guy has turned into just an eating machine. He knows now pellets, flake, frozen, different kinds of flake. He just sits there and pounds it as much as he can before it goes through because he realized there's gonna be a kind of a limited window. Um, all right, so it's time for the big event. Uh, the gold crown has been here for I think about three weeks. Shouldn't take that long. You guys have seen kind of the uh, acclimation box that you might put in an aquarium. Um, and I just feel like there's just really small from anything but the smallest to more medium of aquarium fish. So this gave him a good 30 gallons of the tank. We're gonna pull the divider and see what happens. I have a thing is about an 80% chance of success and a complete success and a 50% chance that the purple tank is gonna be a bunghole and I'm not, gonna wait for them to settle their disputes. I'm just gonna yank that purple tang right away and put it in another aquarium that doesn't have any surgeon fish currently. So uh, you guys are discovering with us what is going to happen. They have no idea what's coming. So there's two pieces of a crate here. I'm just gonna fold them up and then we'll pull it out and observe. Oh yeah, looks like the Tinker's, uh, you know, he, he noticed him and you see the yellow on the fish got a lot brighter. Oh no, see some scales flying? Damn, he's easy, whoa, he is not liking it. He is not liking it at all. He grabbed a scale. No Tinkers, don't do that. Man, the Tinker Eye Butterfly Fish was instantly very aggressive, very territorial. It's kind of the opposite reaction that I was expecting. I thought the Purple Tang was gonna be angry, but look at how, how just angry and territorial he is. He doesn't usually keep his fins out like that. And his face got super dark around the yellow. He's not still chasing the fish, but I thought he would have been like a little bit more adjusted to him by now. Man, that is, that was a, total failure. I think we're going to just watch this for a little bit and see what happens. We'll throw some food in there, but man, I don't think that's going to be the solution. I really expected the purple tang to be the problem, but uh, this Tinkers is just not, not enjoying this new arrangement, even though they've been together on the opposite sides of a divider for a while. So we're going to watch this and uh, see what happens. So it's been just a couple minutes since we pulled down the divider. The uh, tinker seems uh, to have calmed down a little bit, but man, I really did not expect him to just be waiting for his moment to just savage the heck out of the uh, gold crown butterfly fish. So he's hanging back on his end of the tank and the tinkers, you know, maybe he has his uh, main spot back, but uh, yeah, right now we're just kind of watching and paying attention. It's kind of time for a water chain. So I'm wondering if I should try a kind of a African cichlid trick of uh, doing a water change and uh, rearranging the decorations to some degree, but that fish is smart. He knows it's his tank and uh, I'm not sure how much it's gonna help uh, to do that. But we're gonna keep observing and uh, just see which direction the behavior is going. Yeah, so you know, now it's a little bit more 
chasing, but uh, the big fish is getting tired of chasing the smaller fish. So uh, we're just gonna sit in here and watch it, but I still feel like doing a water change because I was feeding really heavily while I was conditioning this guy and teaching him to, uh, to hang out in this aquarium. So he's breathing fast, but we actually just threw in some food and everybody ate, including the, uh, the gold crown butterfly fish. So uh, we're just gonna keep watching it. All right, so we're using the, uh, the old African cichlid trick of uh, rearranging all the decorations um, to try to, I guess, reestablish the territory, but also just kind of distracting the fish by having our hands in the tank, doing a water change, stirring things up. So they're just a little bit more preoccupied with whatever we're doing in the aquarium uh, than each other. So you can see that Tinker's, um, he's just not even thinking about that fish he's been looking at for like three weeks, just inch away from each other. He's not chasing it, but um, so far so good. But yeah, I think right now the distraction is uh, our hands being in the aquarium. Um, um, but I basically just kind of reversed all the decorations. And I know most people keep fish tanks with a lot of uh, live rock. I just don't really like how much funk gets stored up in those rocks. And uh, you know, we're definitely starting to see a little bit better behavior um, from those two fish where they're almost kind of exploring what's going on. And is it me or is the gold crown like following the tinkers now? I don't know if he's looking to them for safety due to the water change, but uh, very big turn of events. Um, really surprised me how the tinkers just went straight for the gold crown. And here we are just a few minutes in the water change and the gold crown is following the tinkers around. Like, dude, what are you doing? Maybe he's like, uh, you know, one of those small fish that stays behind a predator so that the predator can't really find him, right? If he's just really, really close, then uh, he'll never be able to, uh, the tinkers won't be able to sneak up on him from the side. But uh, yeah, so we're just doing a water change, uh, rearrange the decorations. I'll be shocked if this uh, really, really works. It works with African cichlids, um, but never really had to try it with marine fish. Uh, so we're just gonna do this water change and uh, show you when the tank is back full and with the lights back on. So we just wrapped up the water change and uh, basically rearranged all the decorations and uh, you know some of those African cichlid tricks seem to be working because we definitely noticed uh, the surgeon fish uh, jostling for position and uh, the fish are not normally where they hang out. Um, at times it seems like the, the gold crown is following the tinker around and other times the tinker just feels the need to beat his chest and let him know that this is still his reef tank. Um, so we're just gonna, we're gonna ride it out and give it a watch. Um, I really thought the purple tank was gonna be a problem for some reason, but the, uh, the Tinkers is the one who occasionally feels like he's got something to prove. So, um, you know, the gold crown's gonna have to learn to stay out of his way and uh, we'll just keep an eye on it and make sure everything is cool. Um, but uh, <laughs> you see, that's just uh, aggression, but he's not popping them like he did that first time. So like I said, we'll keep a very close eye on it, maybe turn the lights off and feed a little extra. So that chasing is kind of all right, as long as the gold crown finds someplace to uh, hang out and get away from him. So um, we'll come back at this in another day or two. I gotta tell you guys, it was really touch and go yesterday after introducing the uh, gold crown butterfly fish. The tinkers had behaved so calmly across the egg crate that I just really thought that the, that the gold crown was gonna be small enough to uh, stay off of his radar, but I was really wrong. Um, I'm not sure how much doing the water change and rearranging the decorations helped, but if anything, it was really distracting all the fish while the gold crown kind of settled in and um, kind of took notice of which fish were giving him trouble. So after we got the tank back up and flowing, um, the tinkers were still kind of you know giving chase a little bit, um, but it wasn't as aggressive as we initially saw, right? He wasn't like fired up with his pelvic fins flaring out, um, but he would, you know, chase, but the, the smaller fish is naturally a lot more nimble. And um, I think the tinkers just kind of got over it. Now this morning when the lights came on, they were just hanging out together and I thought everything was super fine. And uh, you know, the tinkers is still kind of has to remind them once in a while, like, hey, this is my tank. Um, but I did notice a little bit of uh, positioning and posturing by the surgeon fish. Uh, most of the yellow tang. The yellow tang was the one who was like, hey. And I think, um, you know, when the lights came back on, they just 
had to remember that there's this new fish in the aquarium. And uh, I don't know that we're out of the woods yet, uh, but so far, as you can see, you know, the gold crown is settled in, he's eating, he's not really avoiding the tinkers. Um, but this is a really dynamic hierarchy with fish, and that's something to remember, especially with territorial species, uh, angels, butterflies, surgeon fish. Um, so we will keep an eye on it. You see the gold crown is just weary of anybody who gets too close. So it's gonna be a while before he gets really comfortable. Um, um, but otherwise, you can see right now, he's, uh, you know, kind of interacting with the Tinker's Butterfly fish. He's eating really good. Um, even the pygmy angelfish are trying to throw down a little bit. So, like I said, this is totally dynamic situation. We're going to keep an eye on it. But so far, this is the best I could hope for. I got to say, it is exciting and also stressful to add such a special fish to the aquarium that's not really replaceable that i put a lot of work into already um, but the payoff is really big if the uh, you know gold crown settles in and becomes an awesome aquarium fish and grows as large as the tinkers is going to be a really show-stopping specimen and i think that's been worth the effort and definitely worth uh, the anxiety and the stress so so far so good um, so the answer to will they get along we're still at a firm maybe um, um, leaning towards yes. So I think it's gonna take a few more days and weeks of, of watching them, but um, you can see right now the uh, the gold crown seems to be doing okay. Seems to be doing all right. So thanks for joining us on this kind of live discovery video of introducing fish to other fish. Um, didn't go as planned, but we kind of rolled with the punches. So if you have any questions about fish displays, about introducing new fish, or any specific questions about fish tanks, I'd really love to hear from anyone watching if uh, you, anyone has kind of a dedicated saltwater aquarium fish tank anymore, um, because those seems to have been really uh, replaced by everybody keeping a reef tank. So thanks for joining us on this video. I hope you enjoyed this kind of live action fish behavior sequence, and we'll catch you guys on the next video very soon. Bye guys.